In this video, three problems involving Kepler's loss of planetary motion will be illustrated. So students and friends, stick around, watch and learn. Before analyzing sample problems, let us first review Kepler's laws of planetary motion. The first law states that each planet moves in an elliptical orbit with the sun at one focus of the ellipse. So as you can see in this illustration, uh, any planet that revolves around the sun okay, follows an elliptical orbit. Well, as we know, an ellipse has two foci and the sun is located at one focus. Now, when the planet is farthest from the sun, that point is what we call the aphelion. All right? And when it is nearest the sun, we call it the perihelion. The distance between the perihelion and the aphelion is what we call the major axis of the orbit of the planet. And half of that, okay, in other words, if we're going to divide the major axis by two, okay, half of that uh, distance is what we call the semi-major axis of the planet's orbit, which we are going to label as uh, letter A. Okay, the semi-major axis of the planet's orbit around the sun. The second uh, law describes a line from the sun to a given planet that sweeps out equal areas in equal times. So again, looking at our illustration, here's the sun, there's the planet. When the planet is at point corresponding to time t1 okay as it revolves around the sun and reaches this point here corresponding to time t2 all right the line from the sun to the planet sweeps a certain area right which we shaded in this drawing, the shaded area color pink, all right? Now that area, according to the second law, is just equal to this area swept by the same line from the sun to the planet as it moves from uh, one point corresponding to time t sub three to a point corresponding to time t sub four. So that shaded area also colored pink, according to the second law, is just equal to the first area here. The second law is also known as the law of equal areas. The two areas shaded here are equal, okay, in equal times, meaning the period it takes for the planet to move, say for example, from T1 to T2, is just equal to the period when the same planet moves from T3 to T4, right? And the third law states that the periods of the planets are proportional to the three halves powers of the semi-major axis lengths of their orbits. Again, if you look at the drawing, okay, here's the sun again, and there's the planet. Uh, revolving around the sun in counterclockwise direction, right? The statement of the third law can be written mathematically like uh, T squared is directly proportional to A cubed, all right? So, uh, where A here is what we call the semi-major axis of the orbit of the planet, okay? And of course, Capital T refers to the period or the time it takes for the planet 
to make a complete revolution around the sun. So, in a short while, we shall illustrate some problems that involves especially the third law of Kepler's laws of planetary motion. The first question. The orbit of Comet A has a semi-major axis that is three times longer than the semi-major axis of Comet B. Question is, what is the ratio of the orbital period of Comet A to the orbital period Comet B? Choices are, number one, square root of three. Option number two, three square root of three. Option number three, 9. And option number 4, 27. So for our solution, we just apply the third law, which says that the period t squared is just directly proportional to the same major axis of the orbit okay, of this comet a cube. According to the question, uh, the semi-major axis of Comet A's orbit is three times that of the semi-major axis of Comet B. All right? So A sub A is equal to three times A sub B. And we are asked to determine the ratio of the period comet A to the period comet B or T sub A over T sub B. Alright, so for us to be able to determine the ratio, we just equate TA over TB to the square root of A sub A cubed divided by a sub b cube and then representing all right representing uh, a sub a which is three times a sub b all right notice that uh, a sub b in the numerator will just cancel with the same a sub b in the denominator and we will get for the ratio TA over TB, a number that still has to be uh, determined by getting the square root, which is 27. And that square root 27, of course, is equal to 3 square root of 3. All right, so this is the answer to our question that the period of comet A as it revolves around it its orbit to that of comet B as it revolves around its orbit is in fact equal to 3 square root of 3. Question number 2. One of the brightest comets of the 20th century was comet Hayakutake, which passed close to the sun in early 1996, comet Hayakutake, a long period comet that because of its relatively close passage to Earth was observed as one of the brightest comets of the 20th century. It was discovered on January 30, 1996 by the Japanese amateur astronomer Hayakutake Yuji using large binoculars. The orbital period of this comet is estimated to be about 30,000 years or in seconds 9.47 times 10 to the 11 power seconds. Question is find the semi-major axis of this comet's orbit then compare it to the average Sun-Pluto distance and to the distance to Alpha Centauri the nearest star to the Sun which is 4.30 light years distant from the Sun. 
take note that 1 year is equal to 3.156 times 10 to the 7 power seconds. For the solution to this problem, we make use of the derived equation in finding the period of a planet that is orbiting in an elliptical orbit around the sun. So, capital T period is just equal to the value 2 pi multiplied by uh, the semi-major axis of the orbit of the planet raised to the 3 halves power to be divided by the square root of capital G or the uh, universal gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the sun. All right? But since we are looking for A or the semi-major axis of the orbit okay, of uh, the comet, then we just isolate the quantity A all right by squaring both sides of the equations and then come up with this working formula which is equal to capital G ms where ms is the mass of the sun and the square of its period in other words the period of uh, the comet that is orbiting around the sun to be divided by the value 4 pi squared and then uh, whatever is the quotient inside the bracket, you are going to get the, what we call the uh, cube root. That's the meaning of raised to the one-third power. So substituting, we have 6.67 times 10 to the 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. That's the value of capital G multiplied by the mass of the sun, which is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th power kilogram. And... Uh, the equivalent period of this comet already expressed in second, 9.47 times 10 to the 11 power second. That is still to be squared. All right. And then multiply by uh, the mass of the sun and the value of capital G. And then uh, divide them by the value 4 pi squared. After which, you're going to get the cube root. All right. So the result of getting the quotient, all right, of the numerator divided by the denominator here, this is what we will get. A is equal to 3.02 to 3 significant figures times 10 to the 42 power. And that is raised to the one-third power. Using your calculator, we will get the value of A, which is equal to 1.45 times 10 to the 14 power meters. Which, when converted to kilometer, that will be 145 uh, billion all right, kilometers in three significant figures. And then, when compared to the distance, or average distance, between Pluto and the Sun, which is 5.9 billion kilometers, we say that uh, our calculated A, the semi-major axis of the orbit of this comet is 24.6 times longer than the distance between Pluto and the Sun. Likewise, when compared to the distance from the Sun to Alpha Centauri, the nearest star to the Sun, which is 4.3 light years or 40.7 trillion kilometers away from the Sun, we say that A is 281 times shorter. We are down to our last question, number three. On October 15, 2001, a planet was discovered orbiting around the star HD 68988. Its orbital distance was measured to be 10.5 million kilometers from the center of the star, and its orbital period was estimated at 6.3 days. 
Question is, what is the mass of HD68988? Okay, this is the code number of that star. Express your answer in kilogram and in terms of our sun's mass, which is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th power kilogram. All right, for our uh, little trivia, HD 68988 is a star in the northern constellation of Ursa Major. It has been given the proper name, Nasti, which means star in the northern Sami language. All right, so for our solution, again, using the formula for finding the period, okay, but which is equal to 2 pi multiplied by A raised to the 3 halves power, then divided by the square root of capital G, mass of the star. All right, what you are looking for is the mass of uh, this star with code name HD 68988. All right. So isolating that quantity M will have this working formula. M equals 4 pi squared multiplied by the cube of uh, the semi-major axis. All right of the orbit of the planet that revolves around this star to be divided by t squared multiplied by the universal law of gravitational constant capital G. Substituting, we have 4 pi squared to be multiplied by um, the value of the same axis of the orbit all right which is 10.5 raised to the ninth power meters then you're going to get the cube of that uh, value for a and later after multiplying to 4 pi squared we will divide it by the square of the period given as 5.44 raised to the pit power seconds Okay, square it, and then multiply by the value of G, 6.67 raised to the negative 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Using your scientific calculator, we will get a more simplified uh, result, 4.57 raised to the 31 divided by 19.7. We are expecting that the unit of our answer will be in kilogram. And that is equal to 2.32 raised to the 30th power kilogram. So this is the mass of the star HD 68988. When compared to the mass of our very own sun, which is 1.99, raised to the 30th power kilogram. You just divide this 2.32 raised to the 30th kilogram by the mass of the sun and we will get 1.17 to three significant figures. This means that this star HD 68988 all right, is 1.17 times as large as our sun. All right? In other words, it is just a little bigger compared to our very own sun. So that's it. We are done. Thank you very much again for your indulgence. Thank you very much for watching. Please follow me in my FB page. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.